Hey everyone, Dan Gunther here with my review of episode 3 of The Orville, About a Girl. I was worried that once Star Trek Discovery started, I wouldn't have a lot of time to do the Orville reviews, and it turns out I was kind of right about that. I'm really not sure if I'll be doing reviews of the Orville episodes going forward. However, I did not want this one to go by without me saying a few words about it. The first two episodes of the Orville were certainly enjoyable, and I really did like them. I had a few problems with them, but nothing that would stop me from continuing to watch the series. This third episode, however, has completely blown them away. I have to admit, when I first heard about the topic that this episode would be broaching, and even in the first few minutes of the episode, I was a little bit worried. Is this a topic that the Orville could successfully navigate this early in its run? It turns out that Seth MacFarlane is able to talk about this subject with a certain amount of grace and in a really respectful manner that came out just right. The episode opens with Bortus and his partner Clyden learning that their newly hatched child is a female. Now this is a very odd occurrence. We learn from Isaac that Mocklins produce a female offspring once every about 75 years. However, part of me wonders if that might not quite be true, since we do learn during the course of this episode that Clyden was also born as a female. It may be that females are much more common in Mocklin society, but their births are covered up because of the procedure that's performed so quickly after their birth. Bordis and Clyden wish to have a sex change operation performed on their child, and the ship's doctor refuses to perform the surgery. Bordis appeals to Captain Mercer, but his pleas fall on deaf ears. He involves his government, which sends a ship to retrieve the child. In the meantime, though, Bordis has had a change of heart upon hearing the tale of Rudolph. Of course. Without Rudolph's nose... Santa would not have been able to complete his voyage. Looks like Santa got pretty lucky, huh? Christmas would have been ruined if Rudolph had been euthanized at birth as his father wished. Yeah, I don't... I don't know if that was ever on the table. Clyden will not hear of it, however, and insists that the operation take place. The crew travels to the planet Mockless, where a hearing is held to determine the fate of the child. This is definitely a big issue episode, and like I mentioned at the top of the review, it's handled surprisingly well here. Early on, when Captain Mercer is talking about his reaction to the situation, Seth MacFarlane gives what I think is possibly the most self-aware line I've ever heard from him throughout his career. I'm just policing myself because we all know how easy it is to judge another culture's way of life just because it's alien to us. But you have to balance that against some universal code of ethics. I mean, suppose it was their custom to kill all newborn females. Should we respect their culture then? At the end of the episode, we learn that one of Mockless's greatest and most revered writers is in fact a female. A fact which is, of course, very, very convenient to the plot and a little bit too serendipitous, but I'm definitely willing to let it go when the rest of the episode is this good. I love that the episode is brave enough to make the choices that it does, and also brave enough to not answer the question definitively about who was right or wrong. We know the opinions of Mercer and his crew, as well as Bordas in the end, and we also know the opinions of Clyden and the rest of the Mocklins. However, the episode does not preach to us who is right or wrong in this situation. Is cultural relativism the order of the day, or is there a universal set of ethics that need to be applied here? The episode doesn't outright say, and I really applaud its bravery for that. I also have to applaud the bravery of the ending of the episode, which features the procedure actually being performed on the former daughter of Clyden and Bordas, turning her into a male. I fully expected the episode to end up with the safe answer of the procedure not being performed and everyone learning a valuable lesson, but the fact that the episode takes such a turn really impressed me, and really made me sit up and take notice. I will definitely not underestimate the Orville again in the future. The episode does of course have its funny moments, but I feel like the balance between drama and comedy was achieved much better here. I really enjoyed the jokes throughout the story, the holodeck adventures at the beginning on the set of A Million Ways to Die in the West, I believe, was a lot of fun and really silly, which is of course perfect for the Orville. I also appreciated the Monopoly joke, I did laugh out loud at that one. Look, 
I suggest we all just take a beat here, let the Admiral sort this out. In the meantime, you can hang out on our ship. We have board games. We have Scrabble. We have Candyland. We have Monopoly. You can be the car. Did, uh, uh, Kel, I'm, I'm always the car. Yeah, but maybe this one time since he's our guest. You can be the thimble. And at this line by Seth MacFarlane, which proves that even though he does have his moments of acute self-awareness, he is still Seth MacFarlane, and we can definitely expect his same brand of humor from him. Arbitrator, this... this freak is an offense to the tribunal. Dude, you have been a colossal dick all friggin' day. Shut the hell up. All in all, About a Girl has set the bar very high for the Orville. This is an excellent episode and by far the best of the three so far. I have to give this a full 5 out of 5 Western dance competitions. Well, I know I'm quite late with this review. In fact, the fourth episode is set to air just tomorrow. But I'd love to hear from you. What did you think about the episode About a Girl? Leave a comment in the comments below. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. Links are all in the description. I really do hope to keep doing reviews of the Oroville, time permitting, but I cannot make any promises. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.